Hey, I'm J.D. Payne. Thanks for checking out this video. Today's episode is related to TWIM, or what everyone else calls This Week in Mission History. <laughs> so in this video, I want to talk about what is the Lausanne Movement. And in order to do that, I think we're going to have to go back in time to 1974. This week in mission history, a very famous event took place on the global scale called the Lausanne Congress for World Evangelization. So Billy Graham and John Stott in the mid 20th century were discussing the possibility of having this global congress of evangelical leaders to talk about world evangelization. The World Council churches had been meeting, and so Graham and Stott decided that it was time for evangelicals to begin to get together and talk about matters related to making disciples of all nations. In the summer of 1974, approximately 2,700 Christians representing 151 countries gathered in Lausanne, Switzerland. So after that 1974 meeting, what began was this movement of evangelicals across the world forming smaller groups coming together for think tanks and forums and discussion uh, to be able to talk about a variety of topics related to the evangelization of the world. Also what you have after the 1974 meeting, and in addition to these smaller groups that get together periodically to discuss a variety of these topics, is the second massive global congress that takes place in 1989. It's called Lausanne II, and it took place in Manila. And then when you get to 2010, we come to Lausanne III, which is also called Cape Town 2010 because it took place in Cape Town, South Africa. So in this video, I want to talk about the six most important contributions that came out of the Lausanne movement that started in 1974. Quite possibly the most important contribution that came out of the Lausanne movement in 1974 was the development of the Lausanne Covenant. This document that was put together has been incredibly influential among evangelicals across the world as they come together to partner with one another for the sake of global disciple making. The Lausanne Covenant that was introduced at Lausanne 1 addressed 15 categories affecting evangelical theology and cooperation among evangelicals for global evangelization. This document quickly became the most influential work produced by evangelicals to guide partnerships and missionary labors in the 20th century. The drafting committee of the covenant was chaired by John Stott, who has also been called the chief architect of the document. I'm going to put a link to the Lausanne website in the description below this video. So check it out. Go look on the website. You can see information related to the history of the movement, and you can see information related to, obviously, the covenant and read through the covenant yourself. In the church's mission of sacrificial service, evangelism is primary. Lausanne Covenant, Article 6. And so what you have in the 20th century is this conversation taking place related to evangelism and social justice. On the one side, you have the World Council of Churches saying, no, the church's priority and the primacy of the church's work needs to be placed on the healing of the sick, uh, the relief of suffering, the, the importance of social justice. On the other hand, you have evangelicals saying, no, the emphasis, the priority needs to be placed on evangelization. So what takes place in the Lausanne meeting is this conversation about how should we as evangelicals think about this notion of evangelism and social responsibility. And so at the end of the day, at the end of the, of the time together, Lausanne comes out on the side of saying, while the church must show up, the church must be present, the church must care for the sick, must care for the needy, and be about social justice, at the same time, the church needs to give priority to evangelism, that the church needs to place a greater emphasis on proclaiming the gospel so that people may come to faith, so that societies would be transformed by the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. This tension between evangelism and social justice not only was taking place in 1974, but it continues to this day in evangelical circles across the world. In fact, by the time we get to Cape Town 2010, uh, John Piper made a very profound statement in his plenary address that really kind of summarizes uh, what was taking place in the hearts and minds of a lot of people at that point in time and the tension that existed within the room. Could Lausanne say, could the global church say this, for Christ's sake, 
we Christians care about all suffering, especially eternal suffering. And so one year following the event in 1975, the presentations given just a year earlier at the event were actually compiled and put into a particular book uh, entitled, Let the Earth Hear His Voice, a comprehensive reference volume on world evangelization. You can see from my notes that I have used this book several times. Just a fantastic account of uh, the, the presentations that were given and, and some of the uh, responses to the presentations that were given uh, in Switzerland that particular year. Uh, one particular chapter in this book stands out, and it's one of the things that, uh, that Lausanne 1 was probably the most famous for. Out of this compilation of all these incredible presentations, a wealth of material exists, but one of these particular presentations has probably been one of the most significant ones and has had the most impact on Lausanne throughout the past 45 years. And it is the presentation of Dr. Ralph D. Winter, the highest priority cross-cultural evangelism. And so one of the things that Dr. Winter said in this presentation was that there were many people, groups throughout the world, people groups that were divided along racial and ethnic and linguistic lines, that they were out of sight. They were, they were the hidden peoples uh, when it comes to Christians. And if those Christians in their communities did not cross those cultural gaps to share the gospel with them, they would remain unreached. So Dr. Winter's concept of the hidden peoples actually becomes known as the unreached peoples and eventually becomes known as the unreached people groups. And so evangelicals after Lausanne begin to develop new strategies, begin to think about new funding mechanisms and giving a great deal of attention and effort to the unreached people groups that Winter called hidden peoples. One of the exciting things about the 200 years of at least Protestant missionary work was that as Protestants went into the world, the Holy Spirit did exactly what He said He would do, and that is He brought people to faith, and those people became disciple makers. And so today, we see that the church in the majority world, out, that is the church being outside the traditionally Western countries, the church in the majority world is larger and growing at a much faster rate than the church in the West. And Lausanne recognized that all the way back to 1974. And so there was a, a great emphasis placed in the 1974 meeting, the 1989 meeting, and most definitely in the 2010 meeting to bring leaders from all countries together, evangelical leaders from all countries to come together to address the issue at hand. And so this notion of the significance of the majority world church has been a big part of Lausanne's history from all the way back in the beginning. And so one of the things that Lausanne has pushed back against was this notion of being paternalistic, being colonialistic. In other words, Protestant missionaries, and not only Protestants, but Catholics as well, uh, and Orthodox as well, went into the world and oftentimes brought their cultural preferences to the people. And so there was this wedding of Christianity with a Western culture, and it was brought to the nations. And so Lausanne was basically saying, we need to make certain that we bring our brothers and sisters to the table in this conversation and not allow this to just be a Western conversation. Many a conference has resembled a fireworks display. It has made a loud noise and illuminated the night sky for a few brief, brilliant seconds. What is exciting about Lausanne is that its fire continues to spark off other fires. John Stott. The development of partnerships was an incredible part of the Lausanne movement. In other words, as these groups began to come together for these meetings on a, on a global scale, but at the same time in some of these smaller gatherings, there was this notion of collaborative effort that would come together and would take place. And so you see Lausanne over its 45-year history of showing the importance of partnership and making certain that partnership has been key to this process of seeing people come to faith. And so leadership has been critical over the years. Lausanne has been a part of bringing together some of the most significant evangelical leaders to have these conversations about global evangelization. So you have Billy Graham and John Stott, but at the same time, if you look at the list of the names that have provided leadership to this movement uh, over the years, 
uh, it, it's a list of who's who, so to speak, from 1974 up until the present, a list of, of some of the greatest evangelical thinkers, theologians, missiologists, uh, church leaders that, that the world uh, has uh, and has seen in the past 45 years. Hey, I'm J.D. Payne. Thanks so much for watching and checking out this video today. I hope it's been helpful to you in understanding a little bit more about the Lausanne movement that kicked off in 1974 and some of the contributions that have rolled out of that. Hey, don't forget to strike like and hey, don't hide but subscribe. Yeah, yeah, I worked on that one a little bit. So hey, hope to see you again in a future video of TWIM. Appreciate it.